Hi, my name is Daryl Swindells. I'm a partner at HLB Manjad and head of our not-for-profits for HLB Australasia. I'm here today to take you through our not-for-profit income recognition template. We've developed this template to help you deal with this extremely difficult and complex area of accounting. When you open the HLB Manjad not-for-profit income recognition template, you'll see this page here that has some instructions and some terms and conditions of use. You need to click on the accept terms and conditions down the bottom here and that will open up the template for you. And now you can see all the tabs along the bottom. The reason we've developed this template is dealing with accounting standards, AASB 15 and AAS 1058 is quite difficult and one of the difficulties is working out which standard you have to apply, whether it's 15 or 1058. So our initials considerations page takes you through some of the steps you need to do to work that out. The first part is this section, section headed considerations significantly less than the fair value of assets, principally to enable you to meet your objectives. Now that section has three columns in it. What is the contribution that you are making? And let's say you're getting a donation, your contribution is zero. The second column is how much are you being given in an asset and that's maybe the cash you've received and that goes in the second column and was that money given to you principally to enable you to meet your objectives and the answer is yes to that then we can continue because those three conditions are the preconditions for 1058. Once we've worked out that yes 1058 might apply we then go across to the right here to the section, is it a contract with a customer? Two conditions there, is the contract enforceable? And are, are there sufficiently specific performance objectives in the contract? Is the contract enforceable? Is a judgment call. There are a number of conditions to help you with that uh, in the standard. Uh, such things as, do you have to pay the money back if you don't do what you say you would do? or could the person sue you and, and ask for repayment of their money. The second column here, are there sufficiently specific performance objectives? That's one of the real judgment areas of this standard. It's going to be quite difficult for a lot of people. What we've done in the HLB template is pre-fill a copy of the template with a lot of the uh, examples that are in both accounting standards so that you can see how the accounting standards board uses their judgment to work out whether something is sufficiently specific. Now, the next two columns tell you which standard you're in based on the answers to these other two columns. If you get a no in either of those columns, then you're in 1058. If it's yes to both columns, then you go to ASB 15. Let's say we got no to either of those two questions. That says go to tab two, ASB 1058, which is here, tab two, ASB 1058. Then we work out what sort of asset we've got. Is it cash? Is it a lease asset? Is it property, plant and equipment? Or is it an intangible asset? And you put that onto the schedule. And then you have to work out whether or not you're going to recognise a liability. Do you have a liability? That could be a financial liability, a lease liability, or a provision. Or is it a contribution by owners? And then any difference between your assets and your liabilities is recognised in income on day one. Now let's just go back to the initial considerations tab and assume that we were pushed into ASB 15, which is tab number three. ASB 15 has five steps that you need to go through to work out when and how to recognise your income. These are here on this schedule. The first one is, is there a contract with a customer? And you have to work out that. To help you with that, we've got this tab 3.1 here, steps on identifying a contract with a customer. Is it approved, rights identified, payment terms, non-commercial substance, probable that consideration will be collected, and is it combined with other contracts where you might have to join it with other contracts. If it is a, con um, a combination of contracts, these three columns here will help you work that out. Now that's step one in the ASB 15 tab three. Then we go to step two, which is identify the performance obligations. 
There are references here to the accounting standards, so you can go and get some more guidance on these. And you need to document here what the performance obligations are and whether you're going to satisfy them at a point in time or over time. Step three is to determine the transaction price. Step four is to allocate that transaction price across the performance obligations and then recognise revenue either at a point in time or over time or maybe at the end of the contract, which is at a point in time. Then we go to these last two columns where you can write down when you're going to recognise the income. We also have a column here, a tab here, to help you through when the performance obligations are going to be satisfied. And you can take yourself through those questions there. Again, there is a lot of judgment involved in those steps and you might need assistance with that. Contract costs can also be capitalised and taken into account at the same time as income in certain circumstances. The accounting standards tell us how to do that and this tab here asks you some questions about any contract costs you might have. So having done that, whether it's 1058 or ASB 15, you can work out when and how you're going to recognise the income. We have another section here, another tab, whether it's a non-financial asset. This is when someone's giving you money to build maybe a building, and the question is when do you recognise the income from that? The standard has a number of conditions, and this page takes you through those. The first three columns are similar to our WSB 1058 column, and then is the asset received for a non-financial asset? Uh, are there identified specifications? If someone gives you some money and says just build a building, that's probably not properly identified. The standard goes through a lot of discussion about what you need to be specifically identified. Do you get to keep the asset at the finish is the next question. And you have to look at that and see what the agreement says. Enforceability is another section and you've already seen some guidance on that. And this next question is, does it relate to a non-financial asset that can be recognised as an asset under another accounting standard? And if it's a building, well the answer is yes, it can be. If yes to all of those things there, then we recognise a liability. And then we look at when the performance obligations will be satisfied. And if they note up these questions, then you recognise the income on day one. That's a bit of a guide to how you work through this. As I've said, there's a lot of judgment involved in some of these sections. We've included in the templates uh, a significant number of examples, both from WSB 15, 1058, and another standard. We've also added in a few extra examples on membership organisations to give you some guidance. I recommend that you look at how those examples have been shown on the template to give you an idea how to document it. And then once you've done that, you need to get this approved by your board, signed off, and then you can proceed. As you've just heard, there are some extremely difficult and complex judgments to be made, and making these judgments needs a real deep understanding of what the accounting standards are asking. If you need assistance with this, please speak with your HLB contact and they will help you through the process. Now this is just one of the many tools that we've developed at HLB for our not-for-profit area. If you need assistance with any of our other tools, please go to the HLB website or speak with your HLB contact.